morning. Lord, we declare this ground holy ground this morning. Lord, do with us, do in us what you want to and desire to accomplish, Lord, this morning. Lord, speak into our lives. Speak into our circumstance, Lord. Lord, that your glory will shine through in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for all those needs that are represented here this morning in the bulletin and the ones that we know and the ones that we don't. Lord, you know every one of them. You know every circumstance, every situation, Lord. Lord, we know that you are the perfect comforter. And Lord, you are the healer. Lord, you are the restorer this morning. And we celebrate that today. That we have a hope. We have something that we can pin our hope to, and that is you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the strength, the wisdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would take these words that I'm about to share and mold them by the power of your Holy Spirit into each and individual ear that's here today. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said this morning, Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Amen. And all the time, God is good. If you brought your Bibles with you this morning or your electronic version of choice, yes, you can use those things in here. As long as you're not playing video games. And you can turn to the book of Acts chapter 43 this morning. Let's check out Acts chapter 13 verse 43. Paul and Barnabas went into a synagogue in Antioch and preached. Some of the hearers responded well to the message and wanted to hear more. It's always a good sign. Acts chapter 13 verse 43. It says, Now when the congregation had broken up, Many of the Jews and devout converts followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them, and I want you to remember this word, to continue in the grace of God. Let's dig into this a little bit this morning, and let's talk about the word continue a little bit this morning. You see, Paul told these people to continue in the grace of God. It's one thing to begin right. It's another thing to end right. It's one thing to begin in the grace of God. It's another thing to grow in it. The grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and continue in His grace. You see, the day that you were born again, the day that you said yes to Jesus, and invited him to be the Lord of your life, you encountered the amazing grace of God, the amazing gift. And yes, that gift is free. And I'm thankful this morning for the saving power of Jesus Christ that has come into this man's life and into many of your lives today. How many are thankful for the grace this morning? Amen. And as I'm reading and growing and learning more about God and His grace, I'm continually brought to a place of humility as to how awesome God's grace is. You see, God gave Himself to us with no strings attached. We had nothing to bring Him but our need. We had nothing to bring Him but our brokenness. And I'd say this morning that that's a pretty good deal. As a free gift, Jesus forgave our sins. And he granted us eternal life. Not of works, lest any man should boast, but by grace you are saved. By grace, the Bible says, we are saved. Later, Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians church. He said to them, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him 
who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. You see, Paul was talking to a group of people, and they began right, but they got off course somewhere along the way. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul writes, the on, This only I want to learn from you. Do you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? In verse 3, You are so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? You see, this awesome salvation we have received from the Lord is a salvation of grace from birth to grave. We initially receive the life of Jesus as a gift, and in the same way we draw upon that life daily. We're dependent upon God for every bit of it. In other words, we are to live in a continued dependence upon the flow of God's grace. Let me put it to you this way, friends, this morning. We begin in grace and we continue in grace. And I can tell you this morning that I am thankful that we continue in grace today. The supply of strength to continue comes from God on a daily basis. I'm thankful for that today. Give us this day our daily bread. God does not dump a truckload of strength on our front door with a note asking us to get back to him next month. <laughs> it's like one commentator stated when referring to God's strength. Like manna in the wilderness, he gives us what we need for each day. As thy day is so shall my strength be. Thank you, Jesus. I believe if we are honest here this morning, we sometimes struggle with this daily dependence issue. There is something in us as people that wants it all taken care of way in advance. Does anyone else suffer with that? I think we all do. I guess it is just human nature to want to control everything. I think if we were honest here this morning as a family, we would say, I wish we could turn the clocks back. I wish that we could turn back time. However, we can't. God wants conversation with me. God wants to have conversation with us every day. He wants me to talk with Him about my needs. And thank Him for His provision every day. But the rule of the kingdom is this. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Continue in the grace of God. In 2 Corinthians verse 1, verses 8 to 11, Paul talks about his continued dependence upon the grace of God. Let's read it together. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to through 11. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death on ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. You also helping together in prayer for us that thanks be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. Here's the truth here this morning, church. Paul's life got so difficult that he even despaired life. He didn't know whether he was going to make it or not. He was troubled on every side. He was burdened beyond measure. This happened while Paul was serving God with everything inside of him. 
There was a spiritual battle to be fought, and Paul found himself right in the middle of it. Why would God allow such a thing in a man's life who was trying to serve Him in every way that he knew how? Paul gives us the answer to that question in verse 9. It says that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. Friends, I cannot explain everything to you. I don't have all the answers for you this morning. But I do know that we can put our hope and our trust in an almighty God this morning. Paul continued in the grace of God. But God used some circumstances to keep him doing that. I love the way that Paul tracks this phrase on as part of his statement, who, who raises the dead. Do you have burdens and problems this morning? Paul's were life-threatening. But Paul's God and our God is the one who raises the dead. I love this about God. I love this about God. The problem can never get too difficult for him, God, to solve. Has God come in for you in the past? He will come in for you now. He does it through His kingdom principle. Ask and you shall receive. He does it in answer to prayer. Continuing in prayer. Even if the answer does not seem to come. I believe that God has some suddenly in store for those who will pray. He has blessings stored up for those who will continue as Paul continues. Nurture the hope. Nurture the hope in your heart. You see, I believe that hope is essential for our continuing. The devil will try and tell you that there is no hope. He will tell you that you cannot live for God. It's hopeless. He'll tell you that things cannot change. What is will always be. The devil will try and tell you that your kids won't turn around. If we listen to the devil, we will lose our hope. David said in Psalms 31, verses 23 to 24, David says, Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Remember, remember in the New Testament when Satan desired to sift Peter like wheat. And what the focus of that battle, what was the focus of that battle? The enemy targeted Peter's faith. Jesus told Peter, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 32, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. If Peter's faith could stand firm, then Peter would endure the ordeal. And we know he did. The NIV emphasizes hope in its translation of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 29 to 31. It says... He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Continue to serve the Lord. The first century Christians were people like us, and they got weary at times. They got tired at times. Paul included himself in Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, when he wrote, 
and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in good season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. In other words, friends, this morning, continue to do good. Keep advancing the kingdom of God no matter what obstacles you encounter. Paul continued to serve God even when weary. Jesus continued to obey the Father even even as he prayed in the garden, sweating as if it were drops of blood. Do you remember the story of of Gideon? How God brought his army down from 32,000 to 300 men. When those 300 moved out in obedience to God, they put the enemy to fight. The Medians had about 135,000 men and 300 men put them to fight. Gideon and his men are exhausted from the battle, but they keep chasing the enemy. Judges chapter 8, verse 4, it says, when Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over, exhausted but still in pursuit. I love that phrase. Exhausted but still in pursuit. Have you been there? Have you been there? Every fiber of your being screaming, give it up. But you don't because you know there is too much at stake to stop now. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In other words, today, friends, be faithful to what the Lord has told you to do in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. To continue, it means to be faithful. Do not turn back. Do not give up. Let me share with you this morning a couple of definitions of continue from the Webster's Dictionary today. First, the word continue, it means to go on in a specified course of action, to persist, to endure, to go on or exceed, to stretch. Let me ask you this morning, Has it ever been a stretch? And maybe for some of you today, it is a stretch for you to continue in a situation. Let me tell you, friends, that I've been there. Not every one of our situations is different, but I think that we can identify this morning with the teaching of the Word of God that we are going to face difficulties. We are going to face challenges. The Christian life, life in general, is not always easy. Life is messy. Life is tough. A marriage will not survive unless both parties continue, for better or worse, in sickness and in health. The best do us part. Our society is breaking down because people won't continue. They give up. And they give up for many reasons. No runner wins a race without continuing. No general wins a battle without continuing. No student completes a class without continuing. And no church is successful as it should be in completing the Great Commission without the faithfulness of all of its people. And let me tell you this morning, and I can't say this enough, I am so proud of this body of believers rallying around the needs at hand for one purpose, to go about the Great Commission. And you 
say, Pastor, how does caring for a family going through grief have anything to do with fulfilling the Great Commission? Let me tell you how. Because the community is what? The community is watching as this body is springing into action and caring. We care. We care. You see, faithfulness is central to successful living. Your faithfulness is shining through this week and will continue to shine through. Jesus said, Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 10, Jesus speaking, He who is faithful in what is least, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. In Matthew, chapter 25, Jesus said, Jesus gave the parable of the talents. In this parable, the master calls his servants and entrusts them with talents. To one he gave five talents. And to one he gave two talents. And to one he gave one talent. The master went on a journey, and when he returned, the servants gave an account to him of what they did with their talents. Two of the servants were faithful. One was not. Now check out what God said to the faithful servant in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. You see, friends, before promotion comes faithfulness. That's true in the kingdom of God, and it's also true here on earth in many practical things as well. Something to think about and ponder this morning. Could it be that God has allowed a situation to unfold in your life so that He can prove to you that He is God, that He is in control, and He, by the grace of God, will turn things around and use this. We may not understand how now, but God does use things. We don't always understand how or why, but He does use things. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. In other words, can God trust me to be faithful in the assignment that He gives me to do? Let me tell you, it's not always easy to do the assignment that God has called us to do. I can tell you that I can tell you that as recent as yesterday when I'm sitting in front of my computer screen feeling completely unqualified to journey with you during such a tremendous season of life. It's not always easy. And we're all affected. We're all journeying this day. But we must continue. We must continue. We must. We have to rally together as a family of God and come around those who are mourning and journey with them. We must. Why would God allow trials and temptation in our lives all bringing you about to a decision. Will you serve God out of love toward Him even when it seems to cost you? The Gospel calls us to love the Lord with all of our hearts, with everything that's within us. Does God bless those who serve Him? 
absolutely. Does he provide for the needs of those who serve him? Absolutely. But that is not the primary motive for our service. The primary motive is love. Love is the opposite of selfishness. Love is motivated by the desires and needs of the other. So we tend to misuse the word love in our society. But most people don't even know what it means. The Bible talks about a great falling away that will occur in the last days. People will simply decide Jesus is not worth it. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus talks about the hardship his followers would experience in the last days. In verse 12, Jesus says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. In general, the North American church has somehow lost sight of the necessity of enduring till the end. The genuineness of our salvation is evidenced by the fact that we continue in our faith. In Romans chapter 9, Paul talks about how Israel was cut off from God because of their unfaithfulness. Then he makes the application to us in verse, chapter 20, in verse 22. It says, Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fail severity, but towards you goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you will be cut off. You see, friends, it's false security. It's a false security to think that I can say a sinner's prayer, go to church for a while, and then turn back to my own wicked ways. Charles Spurgeon, he was a Calvinist and proclaimed the grace of God in his, in his preaching. So listen to what he told his congregation in, 19, in 1864. He said, and I quote, Moreover, the common sense of mankind tells us those who merely begin and do not hold out, will not be saved. Why? If every man would be saved who began to follow Christ, who would be damned? In such a, contrary, in such a country as this, the most of men have at least one religious spasm in their lives. Here's the point. God is looking for people. God is looking for people who will continue with him. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Have you begun your journey with the Lord? That is the question. Have you begun your journey with the Lord? Continue to serve Him. Have you begun your race? Finish well. Finish well. Get a second spiritual win, so to speak. And finish your race. Let me tell you something in closing this morning about last Sunday. Last Sunday evening, it was a service just like we have here on many other Sunday evenings, but something significant took place last Sunday evening. It was powerful here last Sunday evening. Daryl and the team led worship right here behind me on the platform. I played the drums. We had a wonderful time worshiping the Lord together. Right here in this room. Presence of the Lord fell in a powerful way. And those that were here, you know what took place last Sunday night. It was powerful. None of us knew None of us knew that that would be Daryl's last service with us. None of us knew that. He finished well. He continued. He continued through life's challenges, life's journey. With such a contagious love for Jesus. 
who used to tell me, Pastor, I just want people to be excited about Jesus. And you know what I'm talking about. If he didn't sense that you were worshiping the Lord with him, he changed the lyrics of the song. To somehow drive home a common theme. Because he understood something about life. He understood. He understood that you had to continue. He had received the grace that I'm talking about this morning. And he couldn't understand why people would not experience his joy and want to worship the Lord the same way he did. He just couldn't understand that. We finished well on Sunday night. I'm going to close by saying this as well. And I want you never to forget this. Because we tend to forget this. Make sure you tell someone that you appreciate them. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till two days to next week. Tell them. You know why I know that? Because I didn't tell Daryl on Sunday night how good of a job he did leading worship. You know what I said to myself? I'll tell him tomorrow. Monday night came around, I forgot. I said to myself, I'll tell him Tuesday. I never did tell him. I wanted to. I never did. Don't wait. Don't wait for the opportunity. Don't wait to spend time with your family. Things can wait. Tell you that message went home to me this week like a ton of bricks. Maybe we all need to learn that message. I believe God uses things in our life to turn light bulbs on, so to speak. This week, as we journey together as a church, as we celebrate, as we come around the Woods family. As we celebrate Daryl's life, let's do just that. Let's celebrate this guy's life. Let's celebrate this man's life and his service to his Jesus, to his Lord. As he served him so well in this congregation, as he served you in this congregation, let's do that. We stand together this morning. around in here this morning. Maybe you yourself coming into this place today and you have a need. You have a burden. I want you to know that your church family is standing with you also today. And more than that, the Lord Jesus is standing with you journeying these moments. Maybe you've come into this place today and you are feeling that you need to have that second wind. You need to have that strength. If we're all honest, we, we need that this morning. I don't know what your circumstance is today, but I do know Jesus does. And with just one touch, he is able to touch you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. For anyone that would reach out in an emotional sense and touch the hem of his garment. And so, Lord, this morning we do that. We reach out and we touch. We need you, Lord. We need you.
you more than ever before. Lord, we need you in this circumstance. We need you in our everyday life. Lord, I pray for each person that's under the sound of my voice this morning. I pray that each one would be strengthened and encouraged today. By you. By your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for each person this morning that's going through their journey. You know each one. Be with them, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. Strengthen. Provide wisdom. Lord, this morning we do pray for the Woods family. We lift them before your throne this morning. We pray for them. Lord, we love them. Thank you for allowing us this time to get to know Daryl. And now, Lord, to continue to love and care for the family. Lord, help us. Help us to do what we need to do. Comfort them in a way that only you can. Strengthen them. Pray for Faith this morning. Pray, Lord, that you will be with her in a real way. Pray, Lord, that you will fill that room today with such a presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that she will know and experience your presence like never before in her life. And Lord, as hundreds of people flow through this building in the next 72 hours. Lord, we pray that this place will be filled, Lord, with your presence like never before. Lord, that people will be pointed to you. Lord, we pray for every aspect of the celebration of life service, Lord, that your message, that your redeeming message will go loud and clear into each heart. We pray your blessing on every facet of that service, Lord. And prepare us as a congregation, Lord, for what you want to do. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. And teach us to pray, Lord, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for coming here this morning. God bless you. Give me a few moments to get to the back. I'd love to shake your hand. Don't forget, tonight's service, 6.30, Daryl's Celebration of Life, Tuesday at 2 o'clock. It will be wonderful to have a great representation from his church family. Thank you.